Good morning, Liberty Church. Good morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. What's cool about that is I only had to do it one time. Most of the time, you got to do it two or three times to get people awake. So I'm assuming all fathers went down there and got some donuts and uh, that had sugar just coming out now. Is that about right? Okay, well, maybe so, maybe not. Okay, amen. Well, it's good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, before we get started, we got a quick presentation. So I'm asking my, uh, my sister, uh, Miss Cindy Holton, to come up and uh, she asked me to help. She says she doesn't have a big mouth, but George told me that's a lie. Um, that's in the house. She's got. Never mind. I'm sorry. You see the you see the look she gave me. Um, so I really don't know what we're going to say. So she's going to relate. See, you know, that you got. Uh, <laughs> the Remedy Kids is going to honor our fathers as his father said. And we're going to honor the oldest father, the youngest father, and the father with the most family here today. Breathe, sister, breathe. And we got some oxygen. She's like, she did all that in one breath. She was about to hyperventilate towards the end. You see, she's in the father with the most. Okay. So we're going to do the oldest father first. Is that what we're doing? Oldest father. Uh, maybe we're going to start with. 75. Man, what you call this church? Lord have mercy. 80. Start with 80. Is anybody that's 80 years of age? Watch you raise your hand, Daddy. You lying? Daddy, lying. Is anybody 80 years old in the house with children? Brother Jean? Brother, is 80. Anybody else 80 and over? No. Wait, no. no he's like, no. Get over with it already. All right. Do we want to bring him up? Is it okay? Brother Gene. Hey, everybody give Brother Gene. He said, okay, that's all. He got excited. Amen. Now the youngest father. Twelve. I will slap somebody in here. Twelve years old. I would beat that man. <laughs> uh, okay. Twenty. Twenty-five. We do twenty-five. Anybody twenty-five? And a father. Thirty. Thirty. Who's pointing? Josh, why are you over there lying? You in church? Man, we need to stop right now and pray. Give me the all elders. Come down here. All right, Josh. Twenty-seven. What are you pointing? At? 28. His wife don't even know his age. Some attempts in love. 29. Josh, 29. Is anybody 28? Who? How old are you? 27. 27. Hey, man, 27. What are we... Huh? He wants me to hold his gift. This is mine. Take everything out of it. And uh, run. It's all right. Okay, what's this? Dad with the most family. Wait. There ain't no question about that, but No. 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 <laughs> Be fruitful in them, I know. I'm just Wait a minute, is that? Is, is, is anybody else? I got, I got six. I got eight. Man. Anybody else? It's God is my witness, sir. Six. That's it. I got the Alpha and the Omega right there. And uh, <laughs> so, thank you very much. Y'all play out. Here. Hold this. Look, I'm, shoot, I'm just taking all cars from my wife. You know, we're, we're good. What's this? Again. Hey, that means Josh gets the other one. You want me to hold it for you? Yeah. Yes. Here, hold this. But just hold them on. Just hold them on. It's all right. Amen. Well, it's good to be in God's house this morning. Amen? Amen. Listen, if you would all do me a favor, I, I want to share a story real quick. Can I share a quick story? Um, 
Um, to all fathers in here, I want to say Happy Father's Day. Fathers get somewhat of a bad rap at times because they 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 don't get pregnant, but they really do in some aspect because we got to go through things that, even though we might not go through physical things, but there's some stuff we go through, gentlemen. Somebody say Amen. It's okay to say Amen today. Maybe not next week, but we can say it today. But uh, fathers have a huge responsibility that's placed on their shoulders. And it would not be given to you if God didn't think you could handle it. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, I growing up as a kid, I never I had a father. Not an earthly father, anyway, but I had a heavenly father. And because of the absence of my earthly father, maybe into the dad I am today, and I got six beautiful, wonderful, loving kids that I promised that I would never walk away and never leave them, and I never have, and I never will. And uh, the cool thing about our love about being a dad is that um, being a dad's a blessing, and I want to honor my heavenly Father today. Okay, because the Bible says that that we are called sons and daughters of God. Look at the person next to you and say, "I'm a child of God." Regardless what way or walk that you may be in, you're still a child of God, and God loves you each and every one of you individually, just as much He loves the next person. We was having Bible study at my house one night, and, and those of you that, that know me very well know that I like fire, not just the Holy Spirit. I love fire. I like to play with it, get my hands in it. And we had a fire one night, and the fire had gone out. But how many people know when it goes out, it, it's still hot? Aaliyah was probably about 9 or 10 years old, and she was riding her bike, and she had stopped close to the fire pit, and nobody was really paying attention. Well, she had her bike tipped over, and she fell into the fire. And, uh, and somebody, I think JB, said, yo, she's in the fire. And she was probably about from here to maybe about where Danny's sitting. And I was there just like that. I grabbed her up, and, and, as, I'm, and as I'm carrying her, she's doing this. So I'm thinking she's on fire. So I'm starting to beat my poor little girl. And I'm like hitting her, trying to put, there was no fire. But when she's like this, I thought she's on fire. So I start hitting her. And we doused her with water. We about drowned her with a water hose, you know. And, uh, and then we took her inside and, and, and looked at her arm, and she had a second, third-degree burns on her arm. And we had to take her to the hospital. And as we took her to the hospital, I'm sitting there, and she's, she's back there. And, um, and I looked down, and I looked at my shoes. And for those of you who know me about my shoes, I don't like nobody stepping on my shoes. But I looked down at my shoes, and my shoes uh, were singed. And they were caught on fire, and they we had some stuff where they had melted. And I looked over, I said, what, how did my shoes, they said, you ran right through the fire. And I want to tell somebody this morning that your Heavenly Father will run right through the fire to pick you up and pull you out. Wherever you will, wherever you are, the Heavenly Father will run to you. He will walk through the fire. He will pull you out and not even think twice about it. Why? Because He loves you. If you would, bring the church, stand on your feet this morning. We're going to welcome God's presence and just thank Him. Heavenly Father, I want to tell you Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Father, for being my dad when I didn't have one, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you have pulled me out of the fire and set my, my feet upon the firm foundation in you. I just want to give you glory and I want to praise your name. Father, you are evidently here in this place, God. And under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that you would touch each and every person's heart here this morning, that they would feel the love of the Father. Well, whoever is here today, Lord God, that may not know, God, I pray, God, that you would speak to them before the end of this service, God. We give you this service, and we ask, God, for your name to be glorified in the name of Jesus. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on our celestial shore. I fly away. I fly away. The Lord. The devil's going to fight us today.
but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails. Can you make? You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make. You make all things work together for my good. See how you make. You make.
Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Father, we worship you. We exalt your name. Right a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I can't attend a whisper of love. The dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good When I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we Say a word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a perfect and all of your ways. You are perfect and all of your ways. You are perfect in 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 all of your ways. You are a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. We just love you, Lord. Oh, would you just lift your hands up to him this morning and just give him worship and honor and praise. God, you're a good, good father. There is no one like you in all the earth. God, I'm thankful that I can cry out Abba this morning. God, and you hear me right where I am as a child of God. 
Lord, that you welcome me into your household, that you've adopted me as a son. You've adopted us as sons and daughters of the Most High King. And God, we submit ourselves to you today. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. over and over again. I just love when the kids talk back to me. I don't care if you get a job this summer. I don't care if you get detention. I can't open this jar. See if mom can open it. Just take your time in there, okay? No means me. Hey, why don't you bring that ball inside and play with it? Hey, don't put that back where you found it. Just leave it on the floor. You bake it. If you put a dent in the car, it's really no big deal. It's in air. Go back to bed. Look, whatever your friends are doing, just do the exact same thing. I got more than enough sleep last night. If your friends are okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Stop signs are just a suggestion. You don't need a chaperone. You don't need a seatbelt. You don't need a savings account. You should buy the jeans with the holes in them. Hey, we're all going to go to church, but you can just sleep in, okay? Can we please just hang out in here for another 10 minutes? Hey, can we get some more bickering back there? All right, bills, yay, traffic, woo taxes, yes, laundry. Hey, can you kids come in here and jump on my bag? Quick, go tell mom what happened right away. You don't need to finish your dinner. Hey, look at your phone when I'm talking to you. I wish I had a smaller TV. We got you that phone for a reason. Texting boys. All right, everyone, listen up. Mom and I are going out of town this weekend, so please, mess up the whole house while we're gone. Please throw a few parties while we're gone. Please forget about the dog entirely while we're gone. Hey, when you finish pouring that, can you just leave it out on the counter all day? Thanks. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to bungee jump out of this tree. That's a really good idea. All right, happy Father's Day. Let's give a huge round of applause to all our dads in the room today. They deserve it. I really love these videos, things dads never say. I mean, they, they just made it so real for me. Uh, not because I've experienced that as a dad yet, but because I had a dad say a lot of those things that, you know, dads do say. But I'm going to ask you to bear with me today. My voice is trying to leave me. Say a quick prayer for me if you don't mind while I'm preaching. And uh, we're going to get through this thing today, but, um, you know, I, I love these videos because it's my kind of humor. It's like cheesily sarcastic. It's cheesily is a word I don't know. Uh, cheesily sarcastic, you know, it's the best kind, right? The best kind. Dad, dad jokes are the best. But uh, listen, I want to tell you about something that we're doing that's really important, and uh, I want you to be there for. Uh, we're, we're doing 24 to double. And uh, this is a discipleship, host church discipleship program that we're going through. It's training us to be the best church that we can possibly be. Uh, if you've been there, you know this, and you, you know the kind of content that, he, that we're uh, being presented with. But we want to do more for the kingdom of God. We want to be more for the kingdom of God. We want to be equipped uh, as the people of God to impact our city. That's what we're here for. If we're not here for that, I don't know what we're meeting for on Sundays. Um, but we're here for the lost people and to reach out to them. And that's what 24 to Double is all about for us. So if you want to take part in that, next Sunday on the 25th at 5.30 p.m., meet here in the sanctuary. We're going to be going through the second month of training. And uh, you want to be a part of that. If you want to get plugged into ministry of any kind, you want to be there. If you want to uh, be a part of what goes on here, a part of the vision of God in this church, you want to be there for this. So uh, join me at 5.30 uh, on, on Sunday, next Sunday, the 25th. Will you do that for me? Yes. Okay, well, a lot of you didn't say yes. I'm glad you didn't lie to me if you're not going to come. But, uh, 24 to double, next, next Sunday at 5.30. I truly believe, I really believe we've got an awesome church, don't you? I think we've got awesome church and we've got awesome families in our church, uh, which is, is why like a day like today is so important. We don't have kids' classes today. Congratulations, parents. Uh, the family's all together. And, and so it, it's really important to us to minister to families, to me especially. I, I've always loved watching families. I, and I mean that in the least weird way that it sounds. But I love watching families because uh, there's something beautiful about the way uh, a family unit works and each individual member and how each individual member interacts with the rest of the unit and how each, each person contributes to the overall purpose of the family, and I'm going to tell you today, I want to talk to you about a really um, 
huge role. And when I say huge, I don't mean the size of the person. And when I say role, I don't mean the big dad bellies with rolls on them. That's not what I mean. A huge, that went over really bad. A uh, huge role in the family unit, and, and that's dads. I want to talk to dads today. Um, but, uh, you, you know, if, if we're going to talk about something, we've got to go to the Word of God. And the Word of God, uh, not as identified as the Father. Well, how do you know that? My mind, it, my mind first goes to Jesus, the Son. Because when I'm talking to fathers, and ladies, I'm not trying to leave you out today, but today we're going to celebrate dads. And uh, when I'm talking to fathers or dads, I'm really talking to sons. That's really what I'm talking to. Those are sons who, who maybe uh, were like Jesus and calling out in his moment of desperation. He said, Abba, Abba, why have you forsaken me? Daddy, why have you left me? Daddy, where did you go? I'm looking for you. But there's a lot of sons in the world today and a lot of sons that have grown up in this world that are screaming out, Abba, where are you at? Daddy, where, did, where are you at? There are children, there's the next generation that's growing up and they are screaming out for the love of a father today. And many of us are like those people. Many of you in the room today, you can say, you know what, I don't know how to be a father because I never had an example to me by a father uh, in my home. But I want to present you with a case today fathers that will encourage you, and I hope that it will help you to step out and to be called out to be the father that God wants you to be. If you'll turn to uh, Psalm chapter 68, verse 5, I'm going to have it on the screen for you too, but I'm just going to read it here. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says this, Psalm 68, verse 5, it just says simply this, He's a father to the fathers, of the fatherless. He's a defender of the widows, is God in His holy habitation. That's who he's identified as. He is a father of the fatherless, the defender of the widows. And I want to focus in on that message at the very beginning. He's a father of the fatherless. He's a father to the fatherless. And, and, and God, I hope you'll add blessing to your word today. But I, I just want us to really talk about the role of a father for just a minute. Because I think that if you're going to step out and be the father that God has called you to be, uh, men in the room, dads, fathers, wherever you are today, I think you have to understand what a father really is. Now, I'm going to help some people today because you don't, you, you don't even know what a dad is supposed to be because you never had one. And, and I am, I'm, I'm willing to know, and I'm not naive enough to think that everybody in here has always had a perfect past. Can I get an amen, somebody? And, and I'm not naive enough to think that everybody's family unit was the perfect family unit. It wasn't the American dream. It wasn't what everybody else said it should be. And I, and I understand in here we've got people today that you'd say, I don't know what being a father is. And some of you are doing a great job in spite of the fact that you never had anybody show you how to do it. Amen, Remedy Church? we got some dads in the place today that are doing it. Out of, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. I don't really know what's going on or how to do it or how to be it. But you know what? God's helping me. And I, I commend you today, fathers, for the job you're doing. And I want to talk to you a little bit, first of all, about what a father is. And there are five things I want to tell you what a father is before we go any further. And number one, I'm going to jump right into it. A father is a protector. He's a protector. He should be somebody that stands for and stands up for his family. Now, now, this is where we get on equal ground, dads, because there are men in the room who would say, I had a father, and he stood in for me and stood up for me, and, and, and I know what it's like to be led by a man that stands on the forefront. And I got some people in the room that would say that. I got a good dad. My dad was one of those people. He always led by example. He always led by his word. And I'm going to get to, you, uh, to, to the word in just a second, but uh, a father is a protector, and if you didn't have a dad, if you were fatherless, you can understand what it means to take on the wind when the wind starts blowing and not have anybody there, and you don't want that for your children. So we're on equal ground here. Every person, every man in this generation should come to equal ground and say, you know what, it is time for fathers to rise up and stand at the headwind and say, I'm going to be a covering. I'm going to be the one to stand out in front of my family because I don't want my kids to feel the, the blowing of the wind that I feel. I don't want them to have to go through what I went. I'm going to be a father that God called me to be. I'm going to be the one. I'm going to fulfill that role that I see in Scripture. I'm going to stand up today and be what I'm supposed to be in Jesus. Do I have any dads in the room? So whether you had a father who did it, or you were fatherless and you felt the harsh wind of the enemy blowing against you and causing a storm in your life, you know the importance of being a protector as a father. 
You know the importance of standing headstrong into the winds that your family might face and leading by example and saying, you know what, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to be the one to lead. And I understand that life is going to be hard and it's not always going to be great and it's not always going to be smooth, but I'll be the one to step out and say, I know where we need to go. I'm going to be like Abraham and take up my family and I'm going to listen to God and I'm going to go wherever he calls me, no matter how rough it looks, no matter if I've got a direction yet, I'm just going to keep pursuing Jesus, we need some men in the room to stand up and pursue Jesus again. We need some fathers. I didn't get a lot of amens right there, but I'm going to keep preaching it because it's right. We need some fathers that will stand up one more time and say, you know what? My family is too good. It's been called out, and I love Jesus, and I'm going to lead my family to do it. Somebody shout to the Lord this morning. If you are fatherless, you understand what it means to take on the headwinds. And I, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you this morning. If you're sitting in here and you were fatherless growing up and you're still fatherless now and you're going to be fatherless till Je- Jesus comes back here on this earth, I'm going to tell you nothing is wasted with God. God will take your situation and He'll take the experience that you have with the headwinds coming on you strong and He will use it for the glory of God. He, he will use it for the glory of, of Himself. He, he will shine brightly. He will shine as bright as He possibly can in your life. And I would venture to say, I would venture to say today that those who are fatherless and you could stand against the winds in the moments that you had to do that when you weren't supposed to, God will equip you even more. We come away from situations like that thinking, you know what? I never had that daddy, so I can't be that daddy. But God prepared you for this moment. You are called to be a protector if you're a father. Number two, a father will provide. He's a provider. When God created man, He created man in His likeness. As far as I know, God is still identified as Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Abraham, he took Isaac up the mountain and they had everything they needed. But, but Isaac said, well, where's the sacrifice, Daddy? And, and Abraham looked at him and he said, he, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. He's still the provider today. Uh, if any of you saw on Facebook, our air went out. We got to get back from camp meeting. It was a great week, and the Lord blessed and aided just like the old devil just to come around and just try to mess up everything God tried to do for you. Uh, and some of you are going to leave here today blessed. Don't be surprised when you get in your car and something ain't working right. Don't be surprised when you get home and something ain't going right, because that's how the devil works. We got home, and we, we, we had four different people come out. We had the first guy come out. He said it's going to be $9,500 to replace this thing. And I, and I said, well, do you know where to find that? Because I don't know. I don't have it. And, and, and so we called somebody else. We called somebody else, and we live in a split-level home. And the way that ours was put in, it was built back in the 60s and 70s. There ain't nothing wrong with the 60s and 70s other than the fact that it seems like every building that was built back then, you got to change everything that you got going on that day. And, 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 and so we had an issue, and it was about the worst-case scenario. But God worked it out. I, I, I just started claiming. I called my mom, and I told, him, I told my mom and dad what was going on. And they said, oh, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm, uh, I'm praying for you. I said, no, I ain't worried about it. I'm just going to claim that God is still Jehovah Jireh, that he's going to provide a way. I want to tell you, the next morning, a man came out, and he replaced the part on it, $400. We got it fixed, and we got air running this morning because God is a Jehovah Jireh. That's just a little tidbit in my life because he comes through when we need him to come through. Now, I know it's not a, a, a permanent fix, but I'll tell you, if it can just get me through until I can uh, save enough money to pay for that thing outright, I'll be okay. Uh, it might not look like we think it's going to look. It might not always be what we think it's going to be, but God is still Jehovah Jireh. And as a father, you're created in his likeness. You're created to be a provider. When God created man, he created him in his likeness, and he is Jehovah Jireh. You are to be the provider. And I'm not just talking about money here, folks. I know people got all kinds of situations going on in their life. I know disability exists. I know all kinds of things. And I don't want to start listing off all the scenarios that you could go through in your life. But what I am saying is that if you're a father and you're not providing something to your family, you are not fulfilling your purpose in God. You might not make as much as your wife makes, but that's okay. You, you better love on them babies while she's at work. You better take care of them as best you can. And just so you know, it ain't called babysitting when you got them, baby. They're your children as much as they are hers. 
And while she's out providing monetarily, and in some cases, you need to be giving them some love and wisdom and courage and teaching them what they need to know from their daddy. You need to be a provider. If you can work, you ought to be working. Let me just get real with you this morning. If you can work and you and you say, well, I've been looking for a job, that's okay. At least you're out there pounding the pavement looking for a job. You might not have got it yet, but God's good and He's faithful. He's going to give you exactly what you need right in His kind of timing. Amen? So God, uh, God called us as fathers to be a provider. It's not just about money. It's about providing something for the family. Other than money, it's all-encompassing. You're called to be a provider. Number three, a father's a promoter. He's a promoter. There should be a point in your life that I'm a young father. I want to tell you young fathers out there, there should be a point in your life that you need to start realizing it's not all about you. If there's anybody on YouTube listening to this right now, you ought to have a point in your life where you understand that it's not all about you anymore. I, I might be the youngest father. I am the youngest father. I'm, the this morning, but I'm preaching to myself this morning. But there should be a point in your, your life where you realize that it's all, not about your family making you look good. It's about you using the gifts and the talents that God has given you to make the rest of them look good. If I'm going to stand headstrong on the winds that come, I better be the first one to promote my family and tell them, I, 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 don't, I don't step out in front of the winds and the waves and the storm and all the roadblocks that come in life so that I can get the glory. we got to remember that it's all about Him. And He's blessed you with that family you've got. And a father should be a promoter. You should look at your children and your wife as your most prized possessions. You should look at your family, the people that are around you that God has blessed you with, and you should promote them as much as you can. It's about you using your God given talents to make them look good. You ought to realize. I'm just going to throw this in here. Take it for one's worth. You ought to realize that by now, dads, the devil ain't fighting you just for your sake. There's something powerful in that. But you need to realize this morning that the devil is not fighting you just for your sake. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Look, you're probably uh, 30, 40, 50. Look, if you're going to be crazy, you're already crazy. If you're, going to be, if you're going to be messed up, you're probably already messed up. It's okay to laugh this morning. Uh, if, if you're going to have all kinds of issues and problems, you probably already got them. Look, the devil's not just fighting you for you. He's fighting for the next generation. He's fighting you for your children. He's fighting you for your children's children. He, because he knows that if he can get you, he can get them. And you need to understand that it's not all about you. And in those moments, you need to maximize every moment you can because the devil is out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's already licking his lips at the next generation. You ought to be a promoter. He's got his mind on your son. He's got his mind on your daughter. He's got his mind on your granddaughter. He's got his mind on your grandson. It's time for fathers to wake up. And remember that you should be a promoter and that you are here for the glory of God. Whatever you got going on, whatever you're dealing with, don't mess, don't, don't mess around and pass that on to the next generation. Do me a favor and look up to the hill from which cometh your help. Do me a favor this morning and, and pray to God and begin to ask Him to help you in the situations you don't know how to get through. Be a promoter and say, you know what, God, I realize that in this moment, it's not just about me anymore, it's about them. Don't pass that mess on to the next generation. Make, make the decision today. Now, I want you to listen. If you take a note, you better take a note on this one. Don't make the decision today to be the father that you were trained to be. Some of you. You need to look. You, you, you don't, don't make the decision to, to be the father that you were trained to be. Make the decision to be the father your kids need you to be. Make the decision that, that, that I'm going to be whatever it is that my kids are going to need because I know my kids wouldn't like me. Even if you had a good day, your kids are not going to need the same things that you needed when you was growing up. You, you have to be present as a father. You've got to be there. That's more than being there in body. You've got to be there in soul and spirit, too, with them to teach them in the right way that they should go. And what we've got is a bunch of dogmatic people in a generation that don't care anything about the generation. They care everything about what they were taught to be and brought up in in the indoctrination that is pushing a world away. You don't believe me? There are 20% less people today going to church than there were 20 years ago. Something has to change. 
Something has to be different. And that's not a knock on our fathers and our grandfathers. But what it is is a realization to know that every generation has a need. And God has put what is needed in the earth for this hour and this time and this season to see a generation rise up and know Jesus one more time. Fathers, you have a responsibility to be a promoter. The father should be a priest. The called to be a priest. We're all a part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, it says. The father should be a priest. I'm reminded of Job, and it says that he prayed day and night for his sons and his daughters, and he, he'd make intercession for them, and he prayed that the Lord would forgive them of their own doings, and he, he'd go out and he, and he would step out and stand in the gap for his children who didn't care anything about what Job was doing. But he said Job was an upright and righteous man. And he stood in the gap for his children and for his family. Fathers, you need to stand in the gap for your family. You need to take up on that mantle of Job and say, I'm going to pray for my family, and I'm going to see the presence of the Lord come into their life. You need to be the ones that will say, you know what, I'm going to get down at night, and I'm going to say the bedtime prayers with my kids, and then after they go to sleep, I will pray another prayer over them. And every day that I wake up, I'm going to pray another prayer over them, and I'm going to stand in the gap for them, and they're going crazy, and they're doing wrong things, and I never thought I would deal with this, but I'm going to pray for them anyway. You cannot just write off your children because they're not doing what you want them to do. you got to be the priest of your home and stand in the gap. Do you, do you know what that means? There is a gap between where Jesus is and where they are, and you are part of the bridge that helps them get back to the blessing of God. Jesus is the only way of truth and life, but you've got to be the one in their life that's going to prime them to accept Jesus. You've got to be the one that steps in and tells them about the love of God and shows them the love and the mercy of God through your actions as a father, a father's a priest. And lastly, a father's a prophet. Did you know that? Father's a prophet. That little boy's crazy. I just come out saying, he, he is a wild child. I mean that in the best way possible. He is a wild child, and I love every minute of it. And sounds like you're frustrated because I'm like, man, I, I just, I don't know how to do this. I never acted this way, but I was a kid. Y'all must be asleep this morning. It's taking y'all a second to get it. This is, this is good stuff. My father's a, a prophet. And my, my, my son, you see him after church, he'll come in here, and I guarantee you, he'll probably get a couple of spankers after church for running through the house of God. Because I, I just, and y'all don't have to abide by this. It is what it is. I love the fact that we got kids in our church and we got kids running up and down the aisles. I wish some adults would get out of their seat and run up and down the aisles in the Holy Ghost again. I'm proud of the fact that we got that, but when I was growing up, we didn't run in the church. And that's a rule for me and my wife, and we tell my kids every Sunday, you don't run in the church. We don't do it. We're going to reverence and respect the house of God. And, and he still does it. And, and he often sits down in that seat after getting smacked the time or two. <laughs> don't turn me on anybody. Right? I'm sick. But, but I, I'm going to tell you what, that little boy, got, he's got a fire in him. And I've said it since the day that he was born. He's got a fire in him, and God has put me in his life as his father to help channel and guide that fire to do what God has called him to do. I can look at that fire in him, and I can look at all the problems that it brings, and I can look at all the situations I get into that I don't know how to handle, and I don't know how to be a daddy, and sometimes I don't have the patience that I need, and sometimes I don't have the wisdom that I need, and sometimes I get down at night and I say, oh, God, help me tomorrow to be a better dad than I was today, because a lot of days I feel like a failure, but I'm going to tell you right now, I would rather prophesy over that boy and tell him you got a fire that nobody else has. You're going to preach the word of God. You're going to stand out in your generation. You're going to be a voice in the wilderness. You're going to, be, going to be the one, not to be a statistic, but to lead the way for the generation that is coming up. I believe on that on you, son. That is who you are. Go out and be an Elijah. Go out and really be an Elijah. Perform miracles. His name is Elijah. He's a prophet of fire, and I'm just speaking that over him. Where many kids, teachers, and teens get ready? You are happy hands for, but I'm going to tell you what, whatever product comes out of that class and whatever steps into this place, I'm going to tell you one day it's going to be greater than I ever thought about being. I just believe that. You know why? Because the daddy's a prophet. And whatever you speak to your kids, they will become. Whatever 
whatever you speak over your kids, they will become. Hello? Whatever names you call your kids, that's what they'll become. You need to be careful what you say. Whatever you preach to them and at them sometimes, they ain't listening to you sometimes. Or whatever you preach at them, that's what they're going to know. If you run around hollering and screaming, look, I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself a certain point in this message too. You run around hollering and screaming all the time and you don't sit down and love them and show them why they're getting in trouble. All they're going to do is keep getting in trouble and just fight through the storm that comes afterwards and say, you know what, I can handle that. I'm going to go out and do what I want to do. We as fathers have to rise up again and love our children, be prophets of God, and speak that which is not into existence in their life. I want to talk to you about Elijah just a second right here because he was a prophet of God. He exampled with Elisha what every dad should do. Elisha followed him around for a number of years, watching him and being mentored by him. And there comes a point in the story when Elijah gets taken up by chariots of fire. He didn't even die. He got taken up by the chariots of fire. But to get to where the chariots were, Elijah did something crazy. He took off his mantle and it says he struck the water with it and the waters parted. And here goes Elijah and Elisha, and they're walking out into a place that they couldn't have got to had it not been for the power of God within Elijah and how he walked. But they got to that place, and he was taken up by chariots of fire after Elijah said, give me a double, por- double portion. Elijah created in Elisha a spiritual son, and it's a picture of what you and I look like as fathers. All my dads in the room, I really want you to hear this today. It creates a, a picture with a spiritual son of what it should be like with you and your son biologically. He created in him a son that knew the way that after he got caught up with chariots of fire, Elisha turned around and he said, okay, it's just me now. And I believe that God is asking a generation of fathers today to mentor a younger generation so that whenever they turn around and you're not there anymore, they can turn around and look and say, I know what to do, even though he's gone. Come on, somebody. I know what to do because my daddy showed me. I know what to do because Elijah showed me. And Elijah turned around, you know what he did? He struck the water with the mantle that Elijah left behind. Your kids, their whole life are going to carry whatever it is that you leave behind for them to carry. You need to be careful what you're leaving. You need to be careful about the legacy that you're leaving. Take care of it. Be passionate about it. Pursue them in every area of fatherhood that you can. Because one day they're going to turn around and you're not going to be there. And we're going to have a fatherless generation that's growing up that don't know how to strike the water and be the, the person and the man of the woman of God that they have been called to be because daddies didn't rise up in the day that they should have and leave a legacy. To a quiet on You should be a prophet. You need to speak over your children as a father. You need to speak whatever it is that God has for your children. That's not saying that you call them and you tell them what they're going to be, but you just believe in faith for them and you speak the goodness of God over their life. That is supposed to be prophets. You still with me this morning? The question is, where are you in the There was a song come out a couple of years ago by Casting Crowns that accompanied the movie called Courageous, and that's the very first line. Says, All right, that's, that's the one of the lines that says, where are you in the courage? You're made for so much more. And we have a generation today that's growing up fatherless. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, it says, And the Lord called to man, saying, Where are you? God asked Adam in the garden, Adam, where are you? Adam had gotten discontent with what he had been given. He had gotten discontent with the blessing of God. And the more that serpent talked, his blessing seemed a lot more inadequate with every word that was spoken. The blessing that God had given him as a father. The blessing that God had given him. He did, maybe he didn't know he was going to be a father, but uh, he, he had to be pretty dense not to know because God gave him one rule. He said, be fruitful and multiply. If you don't know you're going to be a father after that, I, just, I can't help you. But in that moment, not for one moment, did he stop and think that, hey, this is more, about more than just me. In that moment, he was presented with the idea that if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God, and God does not want that. And in the moment, Adam said, you know what, it's about me, and I want everything he's talking about. He didn't think for one moment it was about anybody but himself. And I'll tell you one, one thing right now. Ever since, ever since the beginning of creation, the devil has been trying to kill off fatherhood. 
because he knows if he can get rid of the one that's supposed to tend to the garden, he can sow whatever he wants to. I'm going to say that again because that was good. Ever since the beginning of time, the devil has been fighting against and trying to kill off fatherhood because he knows if he can get rid of the one that's supposed to take care of the garden, Adam was supposed to take care of the garden. If he can get rid of the one that's supposed to take care of the garden, he can sow whatever he wants to in your life. He can get it. He don't have to wiggle it. He can walk right, right through the wide open door. Fathers, beware. I want to tell you something. Fatherhood.gov 2013 said this. 44% of fathers were divorced. 33% were never married. 19% separated. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Did you know that children with fathers in the home show less behavioral issues? I'm still waiting for that to come in. Children with fathers in the home have better verbal skills. Children with fathers in the home are less likely to be involved with drug and alcohol abuse. Children with fathers in the home are, are so much more likely to never be arrested or go to prison. Did you know that 85% of all juvenile delinquents are from a fatherless home? Staggering statistics that tell you the important role of being a father. i got to stop right here and just say for, for a second, I, I just thank God for some godly women and godly mamas and godly grandmamas because up to this point in history, we and we have been severely lacking. And that's not a rebuke. And that's not anything else, but that is the situation. And I, I just, I believe there's probably some other people in here that the only reason you're here is because you had a praying mama and you had a praying grandmama because you were fatherless or you had a father that never stepped up and did what he was supposed to do. I thank God for you mamas and grandmamas today. We're celebrating dads, but I'm just going to tell you, I'm not just celebrating you today, dads. I'm challenging you. I don't want in 20 years for the, this generation and for my son to have to preach that line again. I don't want for the next generation to have to keep preaching that same old adage and that same old thing that we say every every other Sunday, that we say every time something like this comes up, to say, you know what, we all had praying mamas and we all had praying grandmamas. I'm hoping the next generation can say, I'm thankful that my daddy was who he was supposed to be. I'm thankful that I had a father that knelt down and got on his knees and he prayed with me and he showed me what I was supposed to be as a man of God, as a woman of God. He treated me like a woman was supposed to be treated. My daddy showed me and he spoke over me. Everything that God wanted me to be. I want the next generation to call out fathers and say I'm thankful God because you gave me a father that stayed. You gave me a father that cared. You gave me a father that led. I know I'm preaching to somebody today. I want the generation that's coming up to feel a revival that was started by the men of God today. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful I had a daddy. My mama, my mama will tell you, tell you the story. She'll, she'll tell you how it was when I was coming up. I was a little baby. I was born. She, she just got back in the church. She grew up in the church. She got away from it for a while. She tell you, you know, that holiness movement. She said, I didn't want nothing to do with it because I felt like they were condescending and they just came down on me. And I walked out of the church and she said, then I, I came back when you were born because I wanted my child to grow up in a home that loved Jesus and loved on the Lord. But at the very beginning of everything, my, my daddy wasn't going with her. And she'll tell you that, she said, I used to fight with him. And I used to say, are you going to come to church or are you not? She said, I'd get so upset by the time I got to church, I'd be late and I'd be upset. And said, this ain't nothing on my daddy. And my daddy's a good man. And he loves the Lord all, with all his heart. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a, a God-glorifying story right now. And she said, I just got to the point where I got tired of asking him, and I went to the house of God, and I just said, we are going to church. If you want to come, you can come. If not, you can stay here. And one day he said, I'm coming to church with you. And he walked in, and my pastor, I called him my pastor, he's still my pastor. I do My pastor preached a message, preached a message. Because my dad, all you, my, my mom, I don't even know if my dad knows my mom tells a story. Sorry, dad. But uh, my, my mom, she would say, dad would always tell me, well, I'm a good person. I do good things for other people. And my mom would tell him, that's not enough. You have to have the blood of Jesus applied to your life. 
and she'll be the first one to tell you that she's not perfect and, and any of that. She, she told him that she, it's, it's got to be the blood of Jesus. And one day he walked in and everything my mom was saying, because you know sometimes it just don't register when those who are closest to you say it and somebody else has to speak in your life. My daddy got to the church that day and Pastor Pat preached some messages that, and, he, and he said this line. He said, there's a lot of good grandmothers, and I'm about to say this too because I still believe it. There's a lot of good grandmothers sitting on the porch drinking sweet tea. They're good grandmothers, but they're dying and they're going to hell because they're not saved by the blood of Jesus. And my daddy was in service that day, and at the end of that message, my daddy walked down, and he got on his knees in an altar, and he said the prayer of salvation, and he got saved, and his eternity is secure because he loves Jesus. And I love looking back there and seeing a mama and a daddy. I love seeing my daddy worship God. I love seeing my father lift his hands up, and my, my dad don't say a lot. If you meet my parents, my mom will be the first one to talk to you, and she'll talk your ear off all day long. My daddy don't say much. It used to get on my nerves because I'd get in the car with my daddy and I'd ask him about, about something that was bothering me or something I was going through, and he just changed the subject. I said, you're going, what, what are you doing? I'm 16 and I'm asking you a question for God, and you ain't saying nothing. We go down the road and he just keep going, and after, after so long, after so long, I just, I, I just let him be after I asked him a question. And I'm still hungry for that because you know what I learned? Every time I asked him a question, he was silent like that. It'd be about two or three days later, Daddy would come back and say, "You know, I was thinking about that thing you asked me about for the day." Because my daddy didn't want to answer in the just right there in the moment. He wanted to take time to think about it and pray about it and ask the Lord what what he should say to me. And he'd come back two or three days later and he'd give me guidance and he'd give me wisdom. And I am the man I am today because of my daddy. And when I see my daddy lift his hands and praise the Lord, and when I see him uh, get emotional in the Spirit of God, it touches my soul, the very depths of who I am, because I know the very best parts of me come from him. And it's because I have a daddy. And there are a lot of people that are sitting in this room today, and you might be saying, man, I wish I had that when I was growing up. I wish that I had a daddy. But I want to read Psalm 68, verse 5 to you one more time. It says, he's a father of fatherless. And you might not know what it means to have an earthly daddy today, but there is a heavenly father that looks down upon you today. God, he looked at, he, the father looked at Jesus after he'd been baptized and he said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He's identified as a father that's looking down on you and I and he knows everything there is to know about you this morning, daughter. He knows everything that there is to know about you, son. He's a heavenly father in the world. We should stand on with God's house today. And I want to take a moment today in the, in the middle of, of, of a beautiful day about families. In the middle of talking about something that is extremely important, something that I feel like we can't go without. I want to issue a challenge to you today, fathers. I, I, I want to challenge you today because I've told you what a father's supposed to be in terms of uh, of Bible and uh, in terms of what God says you're supposed to be. And I want to give you a chance to do that today. To start today, a couple weeks ago, I preached a sermon about us starting something that would bring us forward into positive momentum throughout our day and throughout our life and do things we're supposed to do. I want you to start something else today. I want to challenge the fathers today to do something else. I don't know if you guys can play any music for me. Exactly. But I want to challenge fathers today. If you are a dad, young, old, and maybe you were supposed to be a dad and you feel like that was ripped away from you. So, so I, I, I'm not naive this morning. There are people in all kinds of situations. But if you are, if you are a father in the room today, I want you to come and find a place on the altar and begin to kneel. And I want you, to, I don't, I don't want you to pray some random. Pr- I want you to pray for your children. I want you to pray for your family. If you're a father today, I want, I want to challenge you today to come and pray for your family. You can come on. I, I, you don't have to wait. I want, I want to challenge you to come and get in this altar and kneel down and begin to pray for your children, begin to pray for your wife, begin to pray for the blessing of God that is your family. And I'm going to wait for another moment because I want every father that is willing to do this to step out today and come down here and begin to pray. This is the most important thing that you can ever do in your life. 
And it's not one prayer that'll do it. It's a lifestyle and a lifetime of prayer for your children, for your wife, as a father, as a spouse, fulfilling the role of God. Now, these fathers here, families, I know, I know you're looking at your dad, I know you're looking at your spouse. I want you to come find your father. If your father's in this altar, I want you to come find your family. And I want you to come and I want you to lay hands on them and stand behind them because while they're standing in the headrooms for you, they need somebody behind them that's pushing them forward and laying hands on them and praying and supporting them. Look, you, it's not that you don't have a role. It's just that roles are different. And I want every family in the place today that if you have a father that's in this altar this morning, that you would find that father, you would find that husband, and you would begin to pray. Maybe some, some of you might have spiritual sons in the altar today. If you're a, a spiritual father, and you have a spiritual son in here today that you just want to pray over, that you have a special connection to, I want you to come and pray with them and for them. It's hard to be a daddy. It's not easy being a mama, but it ain't easy being a daddy either. And I just want to begin to pray for you. Those of you who are still, still in your seats, would you just stretch your hand this way and, and, and just as a sign and a symbol of unity today to pray for fathers, would you just stretch your hand toward those fathers that are here, toward those families that are here, and just help me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I call out to you today. Lord, I thank you, first of all, for providing me with a father to show me the way, to lead me, God, and to show me who I'm supposed to be. God, to give me the, the strength and give me the equipping that I needed to be a father when my time came. Lord, I now know what it is to be a father. Lord, I know the burden that these men bear. And Father, today I pray that you would begin something in each of them, God, that would last for the rest of their life. God, every age, every stage, every season, God, they would remember this day as a landmark in their fatherhood. They'll say, you know what, I didn't really think about it a lot before that preacher said what he said. But I know that God is calling me to be more than what I've been. I know that God is calling me to stand steadfast in the moments that I feel like I'm, my knees are going to buckle under the weight of the burden that I carry. God, I know that burden. And Father, I pray that, that you would just send your son Jesus to take that burden. Help us to cast our cares upon him. God, let us take upon the yoke. Of Jesus is easy and his burden is light. Lord, I pray for every father in the room today, God, that you would give them peace that surpasses all understanding. Maybe for children that are wayward and they, we don't know where their eternity rests and their, their, their fruit is not speaking and telling us that they're okay and secure with you, God, I pray for that father today. God, that you would give him the strength to keep praying. That you would give him the ambition to know, the ambition to know that he is as close to you as he can be and he hears your every word. He hears your every footstep when you move. God, I pray that you would just help every father in the room. God, it feels like the burden of, of fatherhood. Maybe they, don't, they didn't have a father to model for them what it was like to be a right father. And God, I pray that you would give them strength. Maybe their father was not what they thought their father should be. Maybe their father was, was, was there, but he wasn't present. God, I pray that you would give them the strength to know how to be that father that they need to be there to their children. And Lord, for every son that has a relationship that's broken with their father, Lord, I pray that you would just begin to bring mending and forgiveness. Lord, every son that's in this altar, God, because if there's fathers here, there are sons here. And God, for every son that's in this altar, in this place of prayer, God, as they lay their lives down for you, God, I pray that you would bring forgiveness into their heart and help them to mend the relationship between their father and them. Lord, I pray, I pray that restoration would come, that revival would come to every father and every family unit. God, I pray that the Remedy Church would be made up of families that are led by fathers, by the men of God that will rise up and go to battle once again for the people of God. Lord, I call out every heart and every soul in this place today, God. Help us to be a, a people that are after your heart, led by men of God to take their place and take their role in history, God, that a generation would not grow up fatherless, that a generation would not grow up not knowing what a good father looks like. And Father, we know that the only way we're good fathers is because we follow your example. Lord, I pray for every father here that we would follow your example, that we would speak your word, we would live your word. 
God, that we would know what you require, that we would know your commandments, God, that this wouldn't just be another prayer and we go back out and we live how we want to. But God, I pray that you would just, would just, just ready our souls, God, and stir our spirit, God, for what you have next in this season of life. Be, be it good or bad, Father, come what may, we trust in you and we trust in the Father that you are to us. Lord, I pray that a generation that's growing up over these fathers would be set on fire by the love of Jesus that's exemplified through their father today. Father, that these fathers would show what you, you designed them to show in the world for your glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. Jesus. Father, we thank you today for what you do in this place. We want to thank you for what you do in this place. For what you did in this place today, God, I believe the Father's have been touched. I think something has started to move. And I pray that what took place here today would mark us. That you would leave a tattoo on our hearts of this landmark, this day today, God, where we made a decision as fathers to be prophets, to be priests, to be promoters. God, to be protectors and providers. God, everything that you have spoken to us to be. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength to do it as fathers, as men of God. Lord, I pray you would touch every family in this place today. God, as we leave out of here, God, help us to function as the kingdom of God, as the people of God. Lord, I pray that you would move upon every heart and every life. God, bless them. Keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them. God, I pray you would lift up your countenance upon them and you give them peace. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. It's to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. On your way out this morning, if you're a father, we have a gift for you. We've got some uh, Swiss Army knives. They're, they're not anything like super special or anything, but uh, it's a Swiss Army knife. Make sure you grab that on the way out so you feel so having them in the connect center. God bless you. We'll see you all Wednesday.